Hi, I'm Laverne Cox and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanna to talk about mental health. Mental health, mental health, mental health. We hear that a lot these days and I love that because it's so important to take care of yourself. My therapist always tells me that I cannot pour from an empty cup. Young Van Zandt says that you fill up your cup and the overflow is for everyone else. And so mental health for me is about filling up my cup, making sure that it is full to overflowing so that I can then be of service in the world. When I think about my mental health, I think about two really important touchstones that changed my life and changed my relationship to my mental health. And one of them happened in 1997. I was 25 years old and living in New York City, waitressing. I had just graduated from college. I um, was in this kind of gender non-conforming space, which means I had long hair, I had like Beyonce, Destiny's Child era kind of braids, and I wore dresses and makeup and skirts um, every day, but I had not medically transitioned. Transition. So I was um, a very visibly trans, gender non-conforming person like on the streets and, you know, living my life. And it was really, really hard. Um, walking out, um, of my apartment every day and dealing with the bullying, the harassment, the catcalling, the just kind of always feeling in danger as well. And um, I was in a car accident, uh, fun fact, in 1994. And by 1997, I got gotten a settlement from that car accident and I was able to take a month off from my waitressing job. And so I decided to go to San Francisco for a month to visit my brother and I stayed with my brother. And when I got to San Francisco, I kind of had a nervous breakdown. I kind of just completely fell apart. The way that I had been living in New York, working in restaurants, going on auditions, going to nightclubs a lot, and just it really was the daily kind of way that I had to armor up. I understand now, um, many years later, that I armored up every single day. I put on makeup and it was armor and I dressed myself so that I can go out into the world and deal with being harassed and, and called out and feeling unsafe every single second that I was outside of my home. And it had just worn me down. And I got to San Francisco and just kind of, I shaved my head and went out and bought boy clothes the next day. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to be a boy now. And um, that lasted for about a week. <laughs> what have I done? And I went out and bought a wig. And, and then for the next about a year, I kind of did this like trying to be a boy thing during the day and being more femme at night. And by the end of that year, it just was not working for me. I just, I just wasn't happy. And I had known a few women in New York City who had medically transitioned. And um, I started talking to some of those women and I found out where I could go um, to get hormones. And September of 1998, I went to Dr. Rich's office. He um, was this doctor at the time who had an office on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And Wednesday was Trans Day. So he was like a plastic surgeon and he like, you know, had non-trans clients the rest of the week, but on Wednesdays, he saw only trans people. And so that when you walk into the waiting room on Wednesdays, it was a whole show of like these beautiful, sometimes outrageous, loud, body, demure, just every range of trans woman you can imagine. And I remember walking into his office for the first time, seeing all these beautiful women and being super duper nervous and scared. And um, I saw him and I said, I wanna start hormones. And he just gave me a shot that day. And that was it. And I was off to the races and he gave me a prescription for um, pills, for estrogen pills as well. And that was the beginning of my medical transition. Later, I you know, started seeing a therapist when um, he actually retired, like literally a year later. And so I had to find another place to go and I found Cal Lord Community Health Center. And that moment for me was a crucial part of my mental health journey because it was the moment when I finally 
stopped lying to myself. I, I grew up in Mobile, Alabama, and I was very feminine growing up. And when I was in third grade, my third grade teacher, Miss Ridgeway, called my mother on the phone and said, your son is going to end up in New Orleans wearing a dress if we don't get him into therapy right away. And I um, ended up in this kind of what we would call conversion therapy. And I went for several sessions. And eventually when the doctor suggested injecting me with testosterone, my mother was like, whoa, wait, this doesn't even sound right. I hadn't even gone through puberty yet. So that um, sort of conversion therapy was discontinued, but the damage was done. And so I had internalized all of this these negative ideas about trans people based on what I'd seen in the media, based on like that ex conversion experience. I didn't want to end up in New Orleans wearing a dress. This was not presented as something that was wonderful and fabulous. Now I know that it would be wonderful and fabulous. The moment I stepped into Dr. Rich's office, had my first shot, was the moment, a pivotal moment of me telling the truth to myself about who I am. And I stopped running for myself. And that was really, really, really important for my mental health. Telling yourself the truth about yourself and living in your truth is absolutely crucial for mental health. We cannot live a lie and think we're gonna be psychologically and emotionally well. That was pivotal. Then over the next several years, I started therapy and around 2000, the year 2000, a couple of years later when I um, went to County Lower Community Health Center and then like all of the, all of the sort of childhood trauma that I hadn't dealt with started coming up and I wasn't ready and I remember leaving therapy sessions like screaming and hollering and being pissed at my therapist and blah, 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 blah. So I was in therapy for many, many years and it was helping, it was helping, but I feel like the turning point for me, the next turning point for me around my mental health happened in 2009. I had um, done a reality show called I Wanna Work For Diddy on VH1. I was a contestant, I lasted six of um, 10 episodes on that show. And that led to me having my own show on VH1 called Transform Me that I starred in and co-produced. For me, growing up, always wanting to sort of be an artist, wanting to be famous, wanting to be on television, I believed that when I was starring in my own television show, that all the pain and trauma of my childhood would just go away and I'd be okay and I would have arrived and it would just all be amazing. But here I was starring in my own show, I was shooting it and I didn't feel any better. Like, I, I mean, it was great that it was happening, but like all of the pain and trauma that I had grown up with was still there. And I was acting out um, in ways that like, I felt could jeopardize that incredible opportunity that I had. So I realized that I had to step up my work and I had to stop some behavior. I had to um, make some really important decisions around my mental health and I did. And that was really the beginning of me growing up and taking responsibility for myself and my actions in a new way. It was the, uh, the beginning of me finding a community of people who could help me um, with um, my growth and um, personal responsibility and changing behavior. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I think when you are when you have a lot of adverse childhood experiences, to survive it, we disassociate, we create armor, we sometimes create other personalities or personas just to get through it. And we may even turn to like substance abuse or various addictions to deal with it. And those things help us get through it, but then they don't, they don't, they don't work anymore. They're adaptive in that moment, but after a while, if we don't learn new behaviors, those things become destructive. So I had to learn new behaviors. I had to learn new ways of being with myself. I had to get a daily practice. I had to do a lot of stuff. I mean, it's really, um, it's really intense. Um, the process that I went through to become accountable, really accountable for myself. I am responsible for my own life. I'm responsible for the decisions I make and I really, began to understand that and live that. And that was um, another turning point 
for my mental health. And there have been others, and um, I feel like I can share those at another date, another time. But right now, where I'm at on a daily basis is about um, understanding that the body does not know if a trauma happened 10, or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Once triggered, the body experiences a trauma as if it's happening right now. Another thing I've learned is that when it's hysterical, it's historical. There was a moment I was going through a breakup a couple of years ago, and I was kind of a wreck one day, and I was like, I'm a wreck. Why am I a wreck? And I'm like, it's not a out anything that's happening right now. The breakup had triggered childhood abandonment, right? So I was like, so when I was kind of hysterical, I was like, okay, this is historical. This is not about this breakup. This is about this abandonment thing that I had in childhood that I need to address right now. So just having that information, having that knowledge and being able to talk myself through that and then call my therapist and then like, process that was really, really crucial and really, really important. There's an episode of the Laverne Cox Show. I have a podcast where I talk to my therapist, Jennifer Burden Flyer. There's two different episodes and we talk about the six tools of the community resiliency model. And the community resiliency model is a, is a model that was created by the Trauma Research Institute that's really about helping people deal with trauma and have really concrete practical tools to help reset your nervous system and cultivate resilience in your body. There's so much about this and there's so many great details and awesome things and she explains it way better than I do. But right now my mental health journey is really about toxic stress and trauma in my life, how that's been an issue my entire life, how that's become unsustainable and how it's time to live differently. It's really exciting and, and, and some days are harder than others. Some days I'm like, okay, Laverne, you are just back in old habits, right? Because it becomes habitual, like the, the ways in which we've always lived, the ways in which we've always responded to the world. And that's why we have to practice, consciously practice new things every day so we create new habits of being, new ways to um, regulate our, our nervous systems so that we can be happier, healthier, and the very best versions of ourselves that we can be. That's kind of where I'm at with mental health right now. It's a journey, it's a practice, it's not like, I, you know, have realized this and I'm good, you know, I don't have to do any more practicing, I don't have to do any more, you know, it's, it's a daily thing, it's multiple times a day. Before I filmed this, I had a really intense call and I was like, definitely bumped out of my zone and I had to like do some stuff to get myself back. Actually doing my own makeup today, actually I found to be very uh, much a resource, very centering, very um, grounding. It got me back in my body and back in my zone, which is really cool. What is something for you that is a resource? What are the things that um, make you feel in flow? What are the resources that get you in your zone? Share them in the comments, I wanna hear. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I've said something that is helpful to you today about mental health and my practice and my journey, the journey that continues. Yeah, and I wish you all the best. And as always, stay in the love.